Um, every three years at work, jobs policy is they rotate their three-year-old equipment. And so like every, every year there's, I don't know, five, six machines that are three years old. So they go and, and uh, replace them. And then the people that use that machine gets the first dibs on purchasing it. And if they don't want it, then it's, then it, they just kind of start going around and shaking with people and whoever wants to buy it. And thankfully, other than the IT guy, nobody at work is, is, is technology uh, addicted is, is what have you. So I, I ended up picking up three towers this year. They're basically little servers. They're, right. they got little, uh, three point, either 3.7 or 3.9 processors and tons of expandable bays and stuff. So anyways, I brought one home for me, got one for the, got a couple for the kids and I got a spare over here. And I was like, well, while I've got it in my hobby room, let me go ahead and get it started setting up. Cause I was going to just use it for configuring and stuff like that. So I could stop leaving this room, go into my PC in my bedroom where I do my editing, work on dr drones, bring them back here, do my soldering. And then it's like, well, if I've got it, might as well go ahead and, you know, sure. move my camera where it's a better spot. And before you know it, it's kind of like, okay, well, I guess I might, I might try and do some more pod. I might try and do some podcasts or something. Right on. Yeah. I'm going to set a, think a tower up. Dude, it's been like six people this week. I've had to like nurse through and they were pretty savvy folks, man. It's just, well, we'll talk about it. We'll save it. But I think I've got to figure out why everybody is just so tripped out, man, when they're trying, because that's really my only claim to fame, dude, is like figuring shit out. That's it. It's all Helping people. Yeah, man. I mean, that's, that's my enjoyment out of the whole bit. And well, like I said, I mean, if we want to click a fresh start so we can actually start talking, talking and let me hit, let me hit record on this, uh, audio. So is there a yeah. certain point you want me to start recording or are you just fine? Just go ahead and start. Let's just, let's just, let's just roll. Cool, cool. Well, I got um, audio going. As long as it sounds good on your end, we're like yeah. mid teens, so yeah, it looks good. It sounds good to me. All natural. Yeah, I'm gonna grab a quick drink. It kind of stinks. I want to work out how, like, during a call. I can just grab a camera and be like, oh, well, this is this is how I do and manage blah. Just like like the Christie was trying to do with his stuff, but crap that in front of the camera is super close. It just makes a big blurry blob. Yeah. You can't really see what you're looking at. Oh. Oh, yeah. So. Slinging hammers at the track. Finally got the off-road track ready to race tomorrow. So, so what do you what do you what do you do for a career? You do, I saw you make you make all kinds of cool shit. Well, you watched the video, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Right on. You put signs and all kinds of all. Yeah. I mean, I've anything and all kinds of materials. I don't know what your format's like. So, what's that? Are you going going or are you just? Yeah, let's go. Cool, cool. Right on. Well, anyhow, um, I guess a little bit of me. Well, I sent you that video, which is probably garbage food for everybody else. But, uh, man, I, I, I went and got my master's, and I was doing project management, making a good living. And on the same street was a place called Entertainment Design Group. And I just walked in one day and said, hey, dude, this shit looks cool. I want to do something here. <laughs> and they were like, <laughs> hey, you know, what I did. And, and uh I'm kind of a renaissance guy. Had lunch with the owner, who I had no idea was the owner. He's like, hey, I'm headed out to eat. You want to go? Yeah. So I had lunch with Steve, and he hired me that day. It was 20-something years ago. Oh, man. Hold on. Sorry. Okay, it's straight now. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I didn't want to okay. waste it. Um, I'll just bang it out real quick again. Anyhow, um, I guess since grad school, I don't know how far you want me to back this up, but I'm a knucklehead, dude. I'm fucking, <laughs> I got my master's in cosmetology, so I went to UGA, did undergrad. Cool. Actually, a hairdresser, believe it. Right on. 
And then after hairdressing, I was actually a pattern maker. So I got my master's in pattern making from a Yugoslavian guy and made really high end couture handbags and wallets. And oh, wallets. dude. So dude. I, my like finesse came from there. And then while I was cutting hair, went back to school, got my master's. I actually opened a uh, cabinet company in Atlanta. So did custom home theaters and acoustics for a while. And that was pretty rad until the towers fell. The day the towers fell, within a week, I was bankrupt. Uh. All, all my big projects, I had money out in materials, and they all caved. So I had to find something else to do. Went into project management, found a company on the same street I was working at called Entertainment Design Group. Got my foot in the door and learned how to make uh, cartoon stuff, man. Like It's sick looking, dude. Spent the rest of my life making uh, stuff for theme parks. Like I don't build rides, but I build the stuff that makes it look like Batman showed up or Looney Tunes or whatever and did the corporate gig for a while. Long story short, 18 months ago, full genetic liver failure. Uh-huh. I actually, actually died, got a new liver by the grace of God. And Congratulations. Woke up and decided the hamster wheel wasn't for me. So I actually went back to one of my old clients, which is Six Flags Over Georgia. And now in-house, I build everything theme-wise for our park. Oh, cool. And we just merged with Cedar Fair. So we're the biggest theme park company in America now. Oh, right on. So it's just, yeah, you've got a you got a wide background. Nutty, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I just built toys, man. I'm a, I'm a middle-aged toy maker. That's all I do. How'd you like project management? You know, it's decent money. It's super stressful. And for me, it really wasn't that bad because I'm really OCD. I'm mm-hmm. not, like, all the way down to my screws and bolts. Like I'm super OCD. So it was kind of fit me, but it was so boring. And <laughs> I felt like everybody was in my way all the time. And I'm really straightforward, like to my own detriment sometimes. And it It was just too stressful, man. It wasn't like you couldn't make good money. It wasn't like it was a bad job. There was pressure on it. Yeah, dude, it's just too much of a pressure cooker. I mean, just kill your soul, man. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on it. Um, I heard you mention like, you know, finding yourself in FPV and opening back up a door where life's not so mundane and and boring. It uh, it did for me. Dude, with my first daughter, she was born and I was like, man, this sucks, dude. Like it's just <laughs> nothing cool at all. You know, it's not nothing cool about this. And you, and when you're young, you know, like 70, 80 grand a year, it like you think that's like the the best you're ever gonna do. And oh, if I stop this, how am I ever gonna get back here? Blah blah blah. But life just doesn't work that way, dude. Life doesn't work that way. And I've heard you and we've we've gone back and forth since we met online. And uh, you know, I'm a especially after my transplant, I'm a really religious thinking guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a super spiritual moment, which maybe we can have just a, a, a cast on that eventually. <laughs> and um, it opened my eyes to a lot, dude. And I talk all the smack people want to talk in the world, but no, it wasn't the same as tripping on mushrooms. And no, it wasn't the same as when I got five concussion skateboarding. It wasn't like any of those things. This mm-hmm. was a unique experience where my heart stopped and my brain stopped for a moment. And did you have an, did you have an out of body experience? Dude, I was way outside of myself, man. It was the trippiest trip. And I don't want to get too deep into my past, but I, I've never met a mushroom I was afraid of. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> this hey, is I, this I, is I, I, I love them too, man. I love them too. You know, and I, I've never hit it. You know, I've I've been on several podcasts about that exact subject. And I, dude, I do think there's, there's a lot that we can't explain. And I think FPV ties into some of that shit because – you definitely are not going to get the feeling that you get from flying sober any other kind of way. Not on a roller coaster. Indeed, I can ride a roller coaster all day long, any day. Mm-hmm. I can walk out my office door and hop on Superman like in five minutes. And it's not. That it's same. not. Dude. It, uh, it's just not. Whatever, whatever, ever, any drug I've ever, I've ever done. It's, it's not the same as FPV. You know, it's just, it's just, FPV that when you when you when you hit that 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 gap or you hit something that's a challenge to you or you just have a a, a pack that 
you had a shitty day or whatever, and it just it just went well for you, whatever level that is or whatever. I mean, it's just a, it's just something that you can't you can't explain to people the thrill and the rush and stuff from it. Nobody nobody understands it until they try and pick up the hobby and actually do it. You know, and a lot of people can't do it, and you know, I try to explain that to some people. Matter of fact, I helped a guy with with some RC car stuff today. And he had a little Mavic, not a Mavic, a Mini 3 Pro, yeah. whatever the little DJI jobber is. And um, he's like, man, I bought it. I picked it up, but I don't know what to do with it. I'm like, well, and I showed him. I plugged in. I put my little three and a half little tank in the yard and plugged him into my iPhone so he could take a ride. And he was like, oh, fuck, dude. He's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like dude, I'm getting dizzy watching you. Uh huh. And he's like, that shit has to take forever. I'm like, well, there, I think there's some some ways to minimize the process, but no. I was like, if you want to learn, dude, you're eight miles from me. We'll build you one up, and yeah. we'll get you fine. I mean, obviously, this dude, I mean, obviously, money wasn't his issue, but he saw immediately just from a ride along, like, wow. Yeah. You know, I didn't even want to put a pair of goggles on because he's already kind of swerving a little bit. And then you could tell, dude, you could tell. It's a unique experience. It's just like you and I could go do a ride along in a biplane, do some flips, rolls, do some stalls, do some really aggro shit. But until you're holding the sticks, it's not the same. It's well, just- and not only that, yeah, you could get in a biplane. You can go up there where you have all this room and you can do some rolls and some flips. Until you fly that plane through a gap Right. And you know, and dive down a building and 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 not you know hit the ground and not hit a car or not hit you know whatever, like it's it's more challenging in some ways at least visually and and consciously and stuff, because I mean you know how it is it's it's like you're right there you plug in and it's like you're right there even though you're not you know it's amazing I just, it's just amazing. Well, like, I can tell you there's a little more going on than just that because I've always been a decent helicopter pilot, like RC helicopter pilot. Uh-huh. I can fly. I can do most basic acrobatic stuff. I mean, I got buddies that are phenoms that are just world-class still from Atlanta. I can't do that shit. I'm not at that level. But I can get out there and not be embarrassed. You know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. like the old, the old dude at skate park. I still hold my own. Enough to not look like a a child that can't yeah. move, but uh, flying FPV and muscle memory, it it made me. I'd give it five times better helicopter pilot. Oh, right on. Matter of fact, I started in FPV about ten years ago. My buddy Ivan, he's still a great pilot. We still fly together, but he flew with Steel and Schizo and all those guys from Georgia. And I never had a chance to fly with those dudes, but I flew with Ivan like every week. So everything that he was learning from those guys, he was helping me with. And it, uh, it, it's, it's just, it's just crazy how it changed. Cause what pushed me out of the hobby was, I hate to say it, it was that damn analog, dude. I never felt comfortable. Anytime I tried anything, I just, I don't know if it was just the way it was, but my shit would just get stuck somewhere. Stuck. <laughs> And there wasn't a week that went by I wasn't shaking a tree, climbing a tree, trying to hit a stick, trying to throw a baseball, a fishing rod with a weight, a damn hook on a something, trying to get my shit out of trees. And I will say, I've never lost a quad, and I've probably owned more quads than anybody on the planet at this point. And I've never lost one, but it was so bumming, bumming me out every time, man. Well, and, and the shit would get fuzzy, and it's like, dude, now I just rolled the fucking magic eight ball. When it pops up, you're fucked, you know, and then my shit goes well, th- That's the thing. That, that's why I, 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 I always laugh at this argument about, well, I want to fly analog because I'm more, I'm more in locked. I'm more locked in. And I'm like, but you're giving up the fact, you're giving up the fact that you can't see very well. There's a trade off. You may have less latency and be a little bit more, feel a little bit more locked in. But I guarantee you, I'm going to see more, more uh, uh, threats. I'm going to see more sticks. I'm going to see more things that can cause me to get stuck than you can before you sit, before you, you'll see it. So it's like a trade-off. Dude, let me just tell you, I've had this discussion with 
the really top level pilots. I don't know what the infatuation was analog, and I'm a tech nerd like you, dude. Like I know I I can't route my antennas any better. I can't buy any better analog VTXs. I just simply can't. Mm-hmm. No matter what I do, like it's I followed every wiring thing, but man, it can't get no better. There's a path of shugu carrying my cable all the way to the back, and it shit just breaks up sometimes. Like yeah. I've never had a clear analog flight where I felt comfortable that gremlins weren't going to jump out and right. snatch it out of the sky. Right. Well, and then and then you know, I don't I don't like the lack in penetration, the lack of range. I mean, to me, uh, you know, like you know, DJI. The penetration it has, it opens up so much of an area for you to 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 explore and fly. It's to me, analog is like an RC track. You're limited to a smaller area that you, that that you're just going to you know fly over and over more often on that pack. Where DJI, it'll let you get reach out a ways and go behind a building and stuff that analog you can't do uh, because it's going to go to total total to flea race. I mean, just at, at my job, I can get about halfway back to the back of the building and then I got to turn around. You know, one of these, any anything DJI, I, I go to the very back of the building. I'm flying through the zones that are all, nothing but steel and auto parts. I mean, I'm flying, I have free range of the entire building with, with DJI. You can't do that with analog. And so I don't like being constrained into a small space either. Not saying that that's why analog is it, for me is still a whoop thing. But in my whoop at work, maybe I don't fly f- too far away, but it's perfect because I have my little challenges I do, chains I fly over and shit out of loop. But it's not so far away that I ever have to worry about breakup. Yeah. Well, great. <laughs> for me at work, uh, flying whoops at work, analog. I mean, it's, I'm dealing with nothing but just colors going in and out because of just all the steel and the Wi-Fi and stuff. But I'm fine with that because, you know, I'm still getting to fly in close proximity with the whoop is I'm I'm fine with. I'm still hitting a bunch of gaps and stuff like that. You know, in my house, I'm fine with my 65 being analog. Um, you can't do a digital 65. You can but it's still it's 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 overweight, just like the seventy five is overweight with the with the DJI. So my my go to, I've built four of them now, and I've built them for people too. But and everybody makes fun of my little contraption, but my little, it's a Cetus with a Pavo canopy and a naked Vista on it, and I run two S. Is that eighty five? Uh, yes. Yeah. 85. Yeah. Yeah. See, 85, 85 is a good spot. Tiny. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's, it's a decent, decent size. It'll go everywhere I want it to, but it's, you know, it's still light on a two S. I still get four or five minutes of flight. It'll fly like a big dog. Mm -hmm. See my little house, um, my, my mob digital 75, I can fly it, but I can't take, I can't take well. That's that goes for any even an analog seventy five. I can't take the corners as sharply as I can with an analog sixty five. Um, so to me, I mean, you know, it's analog still has its spot, but as far as you know, going outside, going out and flying outdoors somewhere with freestyle, I don't like the limitation of range and penetration in the video quality that analog gives. I you might have ten milliseconds more less latency on it, but I'm seeing a heck of a lot more. I'm spotting gaps and stuff earlier than you are, you know, because that was the one thing that that hit me when the O3 came out and I did the little, the 75 with it. Like the confidence I got from being able to clearly see a gap farther out than I than it, with analog, I'm like, you can take that 10 milliseconds. I'll take being able to line up my shot a little bit earlier, For sure. you know? And so to each their own. Yeah, that's my point exactly. I couldn't see what I'd have to guess a lot. And I'm just, I guess, a really bad guesser because I, <laughs> I always, always wound up in the trees. Always. 
Well, that's why I think, you know, if, if you remember back a year, two years ago, I think it, I think they did two rounds of it when you had, uh, um, oh, what's his name? Um, the, the racer with rotor ride. I can't, uh, think of his name. Um, not Vance. I don't know. Um, he just, he just, he just did another video with, uh, Lamont and them. Uh, he's back or whatever. Uh, Blonde, blonde kid. I know exactly what you're talking about. Can't yeah. Remember. Well, you know, they went out and did did a test racing DJI, and they flew. And then, like, I think a year earlier they did it. Somebody else did another test. Oh, yeah, some other guy. I can't remember his name. He's a racer. He flew a, a racetrack with DJI. Both times they came in with shorter times. Right. And it's it's because they could see better, you know? Sure. And and nobody wants to ah uh, y'all get in my opinion let go let go of the past analog has its place but but DJI could be in the race world it's preference y'all don't want it to be in my opinion well I don't see how you would deny it if it had more channels true I'm true true kick it, true you know it was just a little more diverse than that I mean that's the only thing. I'm not a racer, you know, the seven inch stuff appeals and it is fairly close. It's kind of cool that seven inch stuff. Yeah. Let me preface this. I'm not a racer either. I'm just going off of what I've seen, what I think is logical at the least, in my opinion, DR, we, you know, when DRL and them have these races, um, they could have a, a duplicate just for, di just for digital. You know, if y'all want to go to go to that level, you know, Day one is analog and HD zero. Day two is DJI. And then just let everybody who wants to race the link they want to race, let them race. And, you know, and then, I mean, then you can get some results, you know, in real life comparisons, who's faster, which, which day was faster than the other, you know, but, but I'm not a racer, you know, everybody out there, take this with a grain of salt. I'm not a racer. I just have an opinion. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> like, like I said, you know, um, because I moderate a few pretty big groups and a couple of our guys have gotten into the seven and stuff. It seems interesting. Yeah. Kind of, so, you, so you, uh, you're moderating FPV marketplace and multi rotor group. Yeah. A couple of Porsche groups and a couple of my groups. So about six, six decent size, 150, 200,000 people, give or take. Oh, that's crazy, dude. That's a lot of people. A lot of scammers, dude. So yeah, I'm sure. I'm so sure. Take a, take a moment for a little PSA. And I, I even, I didn't get guy because I don't use friends and family for anything. And also anybody that might use Venmo, they have two paths now. It used to only do like a friends and family style Venmo. Now you can do a secure Venmo. Stay yep. away from Zeal. Stay away from Cash App. Just as friendly reminders, they both suck and you will get scammed inevitably. Two so, Two very good points. Yeah. So if you pick Venmo protected, PayPal, not friends and family. Goods and services. Services. And at least no matter what, you've got a horse to ride the to town on. I mean, yeah. period. You can still you can still lose a, lose the case with goods and services, but it's but it's very slim. There are there have been times where you got scammed, you file a, a claim, and you still lost. But it's it's very rare. I only had it happen one time. One so time. I, very good tips. Yeah, so that's the main thing, too. If you really feel like a deal is too good to be true or this or that, get on the phone. Most of the people who are keyboard warriors, they can't talk very really well. They can't, they can't communicate like regular people communicate. Mm -hmm. So that's another little tip. Yeah, I love I love taking in a box full of stuff, usually that somebody else couldn't figure out or optimize, and making it just awesome and getting Damn. 10, 15 more people near. I love I love the, I love the building. I love improving things. I haven't been able to do too much of that this year. It's been we've been in a financial pinch, but that's that's where my biggest passion is 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 the building and. You know, I don't know, testing out a new frame and like I don't like the way this looks. That's when you popped up on my radar when you did that digital seventy five. 
I still yeah. love it. It's cool, uh, man. It's super cool. I still love it. It's it's of course it's a little it's a little overweight. There's no way around that. But again, the trade off is is I get to fly the entire warehouse on DJI video, and there's no limitation of where I can go. And the and the qual the qual the video quality is good, and the vis is durable. I mean, it's just durable. I mean, I've hit the concrete and and steel pole pul- pillars and stuff into metal poles at Six Flags. Yeah, but being able to fly in and out of dry uh, water rides is pretty cool. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I wish the O three was as durable. When you make it to Atlanta, you'll have fun. Just put that. Man, you know, I think y'all are blessed to live in Atlanta. Cause like y'all have architecture, y'all, there, there's there's a community there, huh? Yeah, it, I have not since I came back to the hobby two years ago. I have not flown, other than my boy Ivan, like I said, with anyone. The community here, if it's here, is not just right out in the open. Oh, is it not? No, dude, not at all. Oh. At least. And I mean, there's we've got good pilots here, uh-huh. and I talk to them online, but. There's a couple of a couple of spots that people do show up to, but in general, it's not it's not a, a mecca, man. And that's, it should be. But it's not. That's that's pretty much the way it is here. But the thing about uh, Arkansas, Little Rock, Little Rock is just a big town. Right. We call it the city, but it's really just a big town. There's they haven't ever invested in architecture. They're just now. St- um, really starting to develop plans to, to you know, make a, a tourist attraction downtown, a family gathering of area downtown. Um, but even with the plans they have, like when they're looking at constructing a new building, it's generally still just still just a square building. And it's like, come on, y'all, give some curves, some arches, some some ar- artistry to it. Because you know, I'm being selfish. I want some cool stuff to fly through that's challenging and, and make an exciting video. But I'd also like to be able to just be proud of our our, our small town. I'm just like you know, it's small, but it's pretty. And in, and in some ways, being small like that, a small city, what have you, those are those those are benefits because we don't have a whole lot of crime and we don't have a whole lot of what have you, some of the headaches that come along with the bigger city, you know, a lot of, we don't have a whole lot of homeless and things of that nature, you know. Well, you can borrow some of ours. Yeah. <laughs> Plain to share. But I think they, it was 90, I want to say 94, they passed legislation here that said you couldn't build flat top buildings anymore. And you couldn't copy the architecture of another building. So since the mid 90s, Everything has to have some some type of unflat top. That's cool. Yeah, it was that's smart. cool it was back then. Um, so how do you like Atlanta? Is it a friendly place? Man, I I actually live because you know, like I said, I'm I'm at Six Flags a lot. So Six Flags is twenty miles, eighteen miles west of Atlanta. So. If, for me to go downtown, like for a restaurant or something, it takes me about thirty-five minutes. So I'm just west of the city. Mm-hmm. So it's it's probably more akin to what you're used to, but the city's right around the corner. So it's kind of the best of both worlds for where the the particular area I am. But yeah, I like Atlanta. But I'm from Atlanta. I'm uh, one of those oddball people. So and I grew up downtown. I'm a I'm a Grady baby. I'm an OG Atlanta. Atlanta guy. <laughs> so. I remember how it was and how it is. It's to me, it's a little too bougie now. It really is. It's a it's 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 a good place for opportunity if you're in film world or it's just gotten so it's expensive downtown now, like really expensive. Yeah. Um, so I've only been to Atlanta once and I was and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to diss or anything like that. I'm just talking about my experience. Uh, me and my buddy, little Dave, we found out like some th- something like at ten o'clock at at night that, um, I don't know, maybe it was eight o'clock earlier or whatever that uh, Paul Van Dyke was spinning in Atlanta, and we decided let's hop in the car, let's go. So we we drove, 
uh, straight there. I can't remember. I think it was like eight hours or something. We couldn't find the little club that he was spinning at. And it was, it had been really cool because it was a small little club and this, and he's a world, world renowned. So we'd probably been like a hundred, one of a hundred people. And I, it blew my mind because we pull in, we find a gas station, I go, go to the, the clerk. Hey, do you know where club so-and-so is? No. May I borrow your uh, phone book? Cause this is back in that day when there was phone books. Can I borrow your phone books and look it up so I can get the address and phone number? No. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to take it. I'm just going to look at it right here. No. And I, it just blew my mind because I'm not used to that here. And I'm like, I'm, no, sir, I, I don't, I'm going to leave it right here on the counter. No. I, oh, okay. So we left. I'm just thinking that guy's a dick. Right. We go and find the very next gas station, go in and ask. Same thing. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know? So then we're, huh? Typical. So then we're driving around. We see some guy out on the street walking. I think he's leaving some club that's downtown. Uh, apparently he worked there. He was just getting off. We we just happened to stop him. Like, do you know where club so-and-so is? And he's giving us directions, but we don't quite understand, but we think we understand. So we get back on the road and we we haul. And we go way out out of Atlanta. Have to turn around, come c- come back. I mean, we spent like four hours in Atlanta just trying to find people to help us. And I don't remember how, but we finally got finally got some proper directions. And when we pulled up, we get out of the car. I don't know what time in the morning it is, but literally we heard two beats, boom, boom, and then it stopped. And that was the end of his set. And everybody cheered, and we were just like. Are you kidding me? Because we were literally in Atlanta for probably three hours trying to find help to get directions to this. Right, yeah. And so we missed his entire set just because people were untrusting, I guess, you know? And so I was just like, mm, I don't know about Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta's all, in, in, in certain areas of Atlanta, it'll remind you of New York. It'll remind you of Philly. In other areas, it's a lot different. I mean... Some areas it'll remind you of like the village in New York. It'll remind you of Austin, Texas. It'll remind you of that kind of scene. It's very pocketed. Mm-hmm. Like nothing in Atlanta is like, oh, I'm going to walk to so and so. You know, in New York, especially even in Austin, if you want to go somewhere, a quick Uber, whatever, you can get there pretty quick. Atlanta's stretched, man. It's like, you know, you could have a 15, 20 mile gap between shit. The perimeter is 28 miles in each direction. So you've got 56 square miles yeah. around Atlanta. And it's, you know, it's just, it's weird. It's a weird city. And I've been all over the planet, dude. I've traveled and Atlanta's, it's a little weird. Well, in the end, we, 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 I don't know, maybe, I guess we were on the road like 12 hours, 12 hours all together. We ended up um, buying some records. We, then we started looking for vinyl shops the next day. We found one. We ended up picking up a few records, and then we headed home. <laughs> Dude, the same the same vinyl shop, probably the number one back then, still is now, is a Wax and Facts, a little five. I think that's. I think that was it. I think that was it. Well, it was, uh, man. Good shows here, too, occasionally. Anyway. It, was, it, it was pretty. It, Atlanta, Atlanta was pretty. I, I will say that. Um. So, hey. So for me, like, as you hit on earlier, when, when I started FPV, it woke, it woke me up. It woke, like my whole life changed. Right. My, my psyche changed. When you found FPV, did you have one of those moments or was it just kind of a natural progress progression because you're already in RC and stuff or what have you? Did, did, was there anything in the FPV that just like changed your life or anything? No, because, well, maybe after a period of time, but in the beginning, not so much because thanks to analog, I sucked. So when I came, when I came back, I just <laughs> planned on sucking. So I, I, probably, I probably screwed myself for a while there. Um, Cause I honestly, it, when I, when I came home from my transplant, it, 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 I don't recommend liver transplants to anyone, FYI. <laughs> it, 
sucked. And I'm like the poster child of success for it. Thank God. But when I came home, there was this dude actually on RC tech, which is a car place. And he was like, Hey man, I'm looking. He was, a, he was on the one to buy section. That place is awesome, by the way, if you're into car shit, but he was in the car section. And he's like, man, I got, he had some old fat shark dominators, like 12 whoops and a QX seven Tyrannus radio. Uh-huh. And I'm like, dude, what's well, the same radio I had when I quit. He wanted something ridiculous. Oh, he just wanted the transmitter I had, a Fataba transmitter. I'm like, dude, I got like 80 bucks. I got it from a, a buddy. I was like, I'll give you a radio, you know, I'll give you a radio for all that stuff. And I got it. And as soon as I started tinkering, that's when my switch flipped. So it had nothing to do with being in the air. It had nothing to do with any of the other stuff. I was holding a little board, a little bitty board. This is this is my motor tester, and you better not make fun. But thanks to uh What's his face that uh, the baby ape people who who makes the baby ape again? I can't remember. Uh, uh, ba- baby in a baby ape? No, nah, who's the with the monkey logo? What's the name of that place? Oh, uh, Darwin. Yeah, Darwin. So thanks to this Darwin board, this is my alligator clip beta flight motor tester. Uh-huh. So when I, when I held a little AIO that was just a little stack and I didn't have to put speed controllers out on my arms. Yeah. Like that, that was my moment. That was kind of my little wake up moment. And I thought it was just so cool. I'm like they, just, they crammed it in a little board. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So yeah. I built two or three and then thanks to Ivan figured out this stupid frost guy bullshit. That's horrible. Horrible. <laughs> it's just burnt in Hades, man. There's no good coming out of that fucking company. Anyways. So I put a couple together and they actually hover when I when I left with the independent e- ESCs because I always started my runs back then line of sight. I would do all my helicopter shit line of sight. Then I'd land, put my goggles on, so I knew my at least my quad wasn't going to explode. And then I'd fly around, and then I'd get stuck. That was kind of my routine. And then I'd climb trees. So that was kind of what I was in for. But when I got the little whoop, and the goggles were pretty clear because I was flying inside, I had a tiny little, tiny little whoop. Matter of fact. When I when I went from that, and like I told you, I'm a nerd. So from that moment, I was like hooked on whoops. That's when I saw the stuff that you were doing. And this is this is how OCD I really am. But then, you know, like that's all my whoop prop shit. You know? <laughs> and I just got all nutty about building whoops. And then once I started flying the whoops, I'm like telling my wife, I'm like, babe. I can actually fly around the house and not wreck my shit. Like I, I made like four loops and I'm like doing cheetah flips. Got in, break it. I had burn up a motor. I was able to go and land uh-huh. and I could see. Yeah. Pretty cool. Then I took it outside and then I quickly figured out that it was because I was in the door that made it so awesome. But that's okay. It taught me how to fly again and have some confidence. And then Timmy Chu, I don't, I don't know if you know Timmy, but he's, he does a bunch of video tutorial stuff. He's uh-huh. on the boards. But he sold me a gecko. My first quad, a decent one, was a three inch gecko on 6S <laughs> with, a, with a Vista in it and some V1 goggles. And dude, right off the rip, I mean, I was flying. I was yeah. Flying. And not wrecking and not landing in trees and all the things that turned me off on FPV. It was cool again. Yeah. So I don't know if there was like a moment because I had such a bad taste in my mouth, but the parts definitely got better. They got a little more expensive, but they still weren't crazy compared to other RC hobbies. I mean, our prices are pretty low in the scheme of things. I mean, I'm used yeah, to yeah, I, I would agree with you. And for a transmitter, you know, to get a good Futaba transmitter for a helicopter, it's a grand, if not fifteen hundred bucks. Right. So I was able to buy, you know. A Zorro, even with the crummy gimbals, I think the first Zorro I bought was like 99 bucks. I'm yeah. Like, and it works, you know, it's not, doesn't have the smooth gimbals I'm used to now, but, you know, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. Was crazy. So, yeah. And you, you, so building up to that, I guess to answer your question, I kind of had a moment, but once I started building and seeing where the open source and those, those poor devs, dude, I, they should get trophies, man. A uh, dude. I mean, fucking hard for so oh, dude. Beat up every day. Yeah, with, 
Star Wars, man, it's free. Free. I guarantee you they're not making any money. No. Them and the EL- ELRS devs, it's like, y'all, I mean, y'all, y'all are like, straight, dude. Yeah. I mean, people people need to be be, be thanking them. Yeah. Just, and they're just doing it, you know, like you and I like to build. They're just doing it because they like to develop. And I, I respect that. But it's like, what we do, it just benefits me or you or what have you. They're benefiting hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, just the simple fact that that now we have an an all in one with a link on board that is every bit of good as good as anything else out there. It's just like it's it's mind boggling, and it was free. They just here you go, yeah, here you go. You know, that's FPV. And you were even talking on your last thing about our uh, transmitter. And I do want to bring up something since we're on the subject because people ask me and I haven't really given a good explanation. But so my favorite radio is the the Free Sky, the Twin X Light S. Uh huh. That's my favorite radio. And I give you a couple of reasons why it's. Oh. Un- I I- unfortunately it is a uh, it's expensive it's pricey but it um has a bay on the back okay Andy, it's like a game controller radio but if you look it's got the same spacing as a big radio as far as left to right where your hands actually live they live like your your pinch or whatever lives in the same spacing as you would a big radio yeah. Like, little package. And it runs Ethos. Have you messed with Ethos at all? Uh-uh. So Ethos is the Edge TX of Free Sky. They're gooey. Okay. So, and if, if you're cool, I want to segue into the whole ELRS thing and protocol in general. Because Fire away. in here, you still have to run a Lua script. And I'm not sure everybody knows. This is an awesome touchscreen, by the way. So Ethos is just an Edge TX on its own. Super intuitive. It's just straight up, push down. There's a little airplane for your models. The The menu settings, it's like a TV remote. Oh, okay. Like very simple and very programmable. So that being said, like walking the guy a couple of nights ago, Tony, he uh, he was talking to you too. We were both kind of helping him at the same mm-hmm. time. Yep. And I'm trying to explain to him you've got your you've got your protocol and you're transmitting stuff, and you've got your radio right here. Well, when you turn a smart TV on, all that shit that pops up is taking Netflix and it's taking your screen and your signal. And the little bar at the bottom that tells these two things how to talk to your screen, that's your Lua script. Mm-hmm. Your Lua script is the liaison between protocol and the radio. It lives in the middle. That's why you got to have Lua 3 to be on 3.xxx for those to talk and match and brain up together. So if you had 2.xxx, you need Lua 2 in the middle. Without that Lua script, you don't have the scroll. You don't have the the relationship between protocol and radio. Right. And until you go into that script and you tell it how to communicate those two pieces, the radio is lost for the signal. The signal is lost for the radio. Doesn't matter what you do anywhere else. So just knowing the relationship and what the Lewis script's meant to do to connect those two pieces, to me, helped him understand what was going on. That's cool. And then number two with ELRS, which I really wish, and I've put in so many, so many texts and messages. Either ditch that fucking configurator and make everything only Wi-Fi, or just put one button in configurator and it's just a building utility. Unless you got a lucky rabbit's foot up your ass and say a British flag waving and maybe a can of peanut butter on your desk, you ain't getting that shit to work. Just so, fucking so, like in, I've had like three times where everything should have worked, 
and it just doesn't work. And the only times I've really gotten it to work through the configurator is if I had beta flight on and I was accessing it through beta flight via Wi-Fi. Now, see, my experience is different. So I would say my request be dump the beta fly pass through. Like I've never been able to get that through. Now, if I if if the if the receiver, if the all in one comes and the factory, when they flashed it, they turned the Wi-Fi on, it's literally 10 seconds for me to flash and update anything I've got. But from time to time, I'll get an all-in-one where when they flashed ELRS on it, they didn't turn the Wi-Fi on for some reason. And so then I have to go through the UART and I have to solder the, the UART using that STID tool or whatever. That's rare now, but it still occurs from time to time. 99% of everything is, is Wi-Fi. It seems like they've caught on that they need to turn Wi-Fi on from the factory. But like the beta beta fight pass pass through that never that's I've never been able to get that to work. Ever work Steve, ever. Just take it off as an option. It's leave the, leave the UART as an emergency backup, but make Wi Fi the default. Simplify I, that. I I kind of I kind of lied a little bit. I have had success with the configurator using that FTDI thingamajiggy. Yeah, the FTDI. If I'm using that, every once in a while I can have success there. It'll communicate, but if it's plugged up or in a quad, dude, it never works. Huh. See the FTD, FTDDI, the UART method. That's the that's the end all be all. That's the fail. That's the one way it's going to work no matter what. From for me, using the configurator. Um, but the Wi Fi differing views on it tells me is not is doing it to a lot of people in different ways. And it shouldn't. It should be very predictable. Yeah. But if you get Wi-Fi on and you know how to just get to the default gateway, it works for everyone. Yeah. The Wi-Fi if, is brilliant. If you go into Wi-Fi mode, I do have a couple of ELRSs, and it's only two out of, say, 500 builds that I consider permanently bricked, which isn't supposed to be possible. But let me tell you, they're bricked, and they're going to stay bricked. They won't. I, I haven't bricked anything yet. Yeah, let's not come on. I've built literally probably 500 quads in the last year, so it's a lot of building. Dude, my favorite thing is the is the, is the passphrase. Like, thank so, y'all, thank y'all. I, I mean, I, I I haven't bound a quad since ELRS came out. It's just thank you. <laughs> it works great, and you know, I, I once you once you get someone and this show me got the perfect example. Dude, at the brink of like, fuck this shit. I'm throwing it all in the bin and I'm setting it on fire and putting my ex-wife in there with it. Like all of that, you know, <laughs> and to go from there. And it did, it took about two hours. I'm not going to lie. But at the end of that two hours, dude, he's like, are you fucking kidding me? Is that simple? I'm like, yeah, dude. Because we kind of, <laughs> kind of had to unscrew up what was screwed up. And, and I don't want to name any names, but. Somebody at a place that rhymes with motor bright, it gave him some really bad advice. Uh, I mean, he he was going through a UR, but they also had him bridging the S bus port and it mucked up a bunch of stuff. I could have got him in and out of the door super happy in about 30 minutes had I known. Well, some of that was coming from Motor Riot. That's, that's what I just said. Because <laughs> he showed me that he showed me the uh. The emails directly from from so them. They had him bridge the S mm-hmm. bus, bus PWM jobbers, which wouldn't let UART one talk to ELRS. Ah, so like, okay. All the stuff because I dude, I had it Wi Fi, I had it passphrased, I had his radio updated, Wi Fi passphrased. He understood all that stuff. They're good. I saw that we had FaceTime TX to RX, RX to TX on UART1. Sky's good. I'm like, dude, go to your receivers tab, move your quad around. I'm like, yeah, we're there. Nothing. Nothing. I'm See, like, dude, there is nothing left keeping this thing from communicating. And I saw that little bridge. And I'm like, dude, you can solder, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Move those four wires 
across that board to UART3 and go hit UART3 in your ports tab. He goes, no fucking way. I'm like, yeah, way. So, now. so I'm trying to remember. I can't remember. I can't because, huh? What I can kind of picture. I can kind of picture in my head because he had so, so, he was showing me the 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 pin out and he was showing me the emails from the guy, and I, you know, I, I, you would think that well, I think their wires got crossed, and he thought that dude they had to have mean S bus or PWM because he had them bridge that port, which opens up. Because it was S bus and DSM or something like that. Yeah, it, like he was running Spectrum or something weird, but he wasn't. He's running the LRS. Yeah, I told him I was like, I was it's like, dude, I I, it over to his golden, good to go. I was like, I've I've never seen an AIO. I, I mean, honestly, I can't think of one where you where they had that configuration where you had a bridge between an S bus and a DSM. I'm like, that's just odd. I don't, I don't, I don't know why they did that. I don't. It didn't make any sense to me, but no either. But once he had another UR right across. So once we moved that over to three, it's golden. Good to go. Good. But but through all of that, and that's why I told him he was like, I was like, look, dude, you just you just went through the the worst case scenario, shy of like smoke coming out of it. Like he went, <laughs> went as far, far like it's, if it was political, he went he went all the way over here to all the way over here. It's downhill from here. <laughs> it's never going to get worse than what you just went through. He's like, cool. Now, now I know. Matter of fact, he just got a quad for me and it's, he'll have it up and running quick. He's a walk snail guy. So Dude. I will see a story with walk snail if you want, but what's that? I said, I tried walk snail and I just, and he, here's, here's my simple test. Here's my simple test. The picture was good. I, you saw my little tank ass little rip around the house. That's my normal go to race car path. And to me, that's super cool. I love ripping around this house. Uh-huh. But I put the walk snail on. And dude, before before I got all the way around the house, I'm seeing pixels. Uh-huh. I'm seeing, and then I get to the side of my house, I'm seeing pixels, and it clears back up. I'm like, dude, I am literally, when I'm seeing these pixels, I am literally just. Two walls of my house away from my quad. Uh-huh. It's pixelated. I'm right. like, why why would I spend my money on this? Preach. Have a projector in my face with none of that fucking Rubik's Cube shit mm-hmm. and total mm-hmm. confidence. It's pretty much the same price. A Vista it, and a regular walk snail are the same price. And it's not even as good as the as what it copied, the OG Vista and Air Unit. It's not even as good. And so why, I don't understand why people, like, I've got some walks now because I like to just check things out and stuff. That's but it's not- like, why would you, why would you invest your whole kit into into something that's a, a step down from what it copied? I, I, know, I, and I had two, two, three different walk snail builds, quality builds, and I tried all three of them. They all did the same shit. It didn't have penetration. And I still don't think I still don't think they can get they can get to max wattage. I don't think they can match DJI's wattage. No, no. It I'm shows not. you how good DJI DJI is. You can reverse engineer them, but the, it's still a challenge to meet the same quality as DJI. Granted, DJI has has fat pockets, but that's one of the benefits of that link is you get all that investment, that research, and 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 weight behind. For sure. I mean, I've got, I just put it up, put it up for sale. I've got a brand new Gap RC Croc 75. It's like for a bottom fly and a seven, seven and a half inch. It's like the bee's knees, dude. It's like the Cadillac of long range, GPS wise, all the way down the board. It won't do half of what my stupid Avada will do. Yeah. 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 I, I, I got no brake pedal. I can't be flying through the air, hit brakes. <laughs> And ABS and just chills until I decide to move. Right. And these stupid little batteries make fun of them. They cost a hundred bucks, but damn it, they never blow up. They uh-huh. never poke. They always work. And it'll mm-hmm. fly for 25 minutes and it's kind of garbage motors. Mm-hmm. It'll go mm-hmm. and it'll tell you when mm-hmm. you can't come home. Like mm-hmm. it, 
there's so much information there. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm probably like you in a big way. I like to see small companies succeed. I love it. It's sure. Awesome. I've done sure. it myself. I've appreciated it. It's helped me live the lifestyle that I like to live. I love it. Nothing makes me happier than seeing an entrepreneur that came up with some cool shit and makes a living off of it. I think mm -hmm. that is what this country's about. I love it. Amen. God's will incarnate on a globe that we live on. So all that said, DJI has done it and they got deep pockets. I don't fucking care. The shit works and it works really well. <laughs> it works really well. That's I mean, all, you know, I, re I really, my, my, my take on it. So one of the takes I have is like, if you, if you just like technology and stuff like that, you have to appreciate what DJI is, is, has accomplished from the OG to the O3 to, to the, what's coming out to the Avada 2. Like the Avada 2 is just, so for me, the Vada 2 is what's going to help the FAA relax restrictions on FPV. The simple fact that the safety features of this thing that if it loses video link, it doesn't just fail safe and fall and hit people. It stops. It t does a 180. It follows the exact path back to the point where it lost video length. And then at that point, it says, this is where I was safe to fly. So now I'm going to initiate return home and then start flying back to you. And then once you get video link, you can take control over again and, and start flying. Like that is going to make the FAA feel so much more comfortable about us doing jobs where we're around people. Like in a way that could save FPV no, because you know, you know. yeah, I mean, a, a three inch on beta flight built perfectly, whatever. If, if you have the right interference, it's just going to fall because the GPS is still not anywhere close to what DJI has. Maybe, it, maybe, it, right. Maybe it initiates, but maybe it initiates in a spot that it doesn't need to fly up and hit the ceiling and come down on the symphony. <laughs> right. Boom. And hit an airplane. Who knows, man? Right. right. So like, and, 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 and honestly, it's fun. I mean, if you really love FPV, you, you enjoy what, what its characteristics are. You enjoy what the freedom you have with the, with the Vista build and O3 build, an air unit build. That's why I kind of have, even though, I know in my in my mind, I'm not going to sacrifice a whole lot of money in FPV for for links that are aren't quite as up to snuff as DJI. But I still have some HD zero, some walk snail, some analog because I appreciate all things FPV. But I'm not going to invest the majority of my money into those links when they when they just can't perform to the same. And then, you know, as far as like a work side, they're more dangerous in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I'm a Volkswagen nerd. I've got a 71 Carmen Ghia that's a show car. It's my, I'm a gearhead, but I don't drive the bitch every day. <laughs> right. <laughs> in my garage for it, but it's not my daily driver. Right. <laughs> right. You know, I got old ass, I get a really good old RC collection and it's great for beating around, but I'm not going to take it to a race. Right. So, all the same thing. And I'm like, dude, I dig it. I mean, I got golf shoes made out of frames and all kinds of weird shit. But I'm a techie. I like shit that works. Yeah. That's yeah. my wife's on the Tesla. Yeah. It just works. It's awesome. I, I can't wait for the O4 to come out. I'm excited about the about the new uh, Osmo 5. I, I, I have high hopes that the Osmo 5 is going to replace the GoPro now. You think? I, oh, man. So let me tell you this. So... So I was blessed to to get to work on a mad uh, mud madness. It was on Max and it was on Discovery Channel, and all the camera guys they're setting up the the side by sides and stuff like that. They're using GoPros. That's the standard. That's what everybody uses, right? And we know that the Osmo Four still has a little bit of a dynamic range lag, but as far as everything else, it's it's just as comparable. I'm sitting there listening to them on the radio and they're, are you ready to go? GoPro overheated. 
Okay. And so they have to swap out. So these camera guys, they've got multiple GoPros because they're just used to them overheating all the time. The entire day, the entire day, I rocked the the Osmo 4, the actual 4, what have you. As soon as it lands, I just hit the the record button. It shuts off. Recording is intact. Everything's safe. It's just sitting there waiting for me. As soon as they call on the radio, you're... FPV up, whatever, okay. I hit, as soon as I plug in, I hit that button and it wakes up and half the time the GoPro wakes up and it, it in, instant recording and it never overheated once. Cool. There was no difference between the footage quality between that and the GoPros. And the way I know that is because on the show, like they used a ton, I mean, it was, it was really cool to see they used a ton of FPV footage. But I know quality wise, it's just a hair hair down, like dusk, twilight, you'd have to go with the GoPro because the GoPro is gonna be a little bit better. I'd had to switch at that point. But then the heat's down and the GoPro is gonna be fine. I really think that the DJI is gonna surpass GoPro on this Osmo 5. We'll see. I haven't seen any tests or anything, but I really am optimistic because not that I want GoPro to fail, but I want I want something that's super easy and reliable and trustworthy. And, you know, if, if it takes DGI in, in a couple of iterations to get there, well, that, well, GoPro, you, you've had the last decade or 15 years or whatever. It, you know, if you're not, if you're not innovating, you're, 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 you're losing. So maybe that challenge will help them pick up their game. But I'm excited about that because I'll replace everything I own. If that, if they've got the dynamic range, just, just that last 10%. That's cool. Yeah. That's maybe the way, man. Maybe the way. You know, and I've seriously thought about, and I'll tell you why I haven't, doing some more photography. Because I shot I shot digital photography forever for a couple of bike magazines for skateboarding. Oh, dude, I, I, all that knowledge. I wish I could implant that knowledge in my head. Very decent photographer for a while, and I really enjoy it. And I've thought about doing some FPV stuff. Cause I actually did real estate and a little bit of movie stuff way back in the day on a Bergen 700 gas helicopter, <laughs> full size Nikon D one with servos hitting the shit. <laughs> just had to shoot a lot of footage. It didn't, you might get the money shot. You might not. Cause it's all servo control, two controllers, old school as hell line of sight. Yeah. And that's just, that's just the way it was, but it was 10 times cheaper than a real helicopter. So people paid for it. And I've thought about doing it now. And the thing that holds me back, I'm too stingy with my time. I'm so busy doing other stuff. If I didn't race at all, regular RC, I could probably take some gigs and have a blast. Mm -hmm. But you know how much time it takes to do a gig. I mean, the actual part of you capturing footage for them is just a tiny portion of the prep, of the build, of the the travel mm-hmm. of the setup of the breakdown and it's it's another job oh it, it job. is and it's, it's a small. it's a 12 or, it's a 12 or 14 hour day job right and if you can embrace the whole process of it and like i said if that's the the hitch in your giddy up you win if that's the thing that that makes you sleep better at night and and completes that hole that we're talking about it's awesome for me right now, I just think it, it would feel like work and I don't want it to feel like work. It So it's not, I don't think it's something that I would want to do as my main source of income on the regular. Because it, it, you know, once, once, once the, the job is over, you don't have any income coming in. You got to try and snag another. And then that's your whole life. I mean, you know, it might be 10 a.m. till four in the morning. You go home, you go back to the hotel, you get some sleep and you're back out there at 10 and, you do, and you're and you doing that for six weeks, Sunday being the only only break. I, you know, I fit, I'm excited I got the opportunity to do it. It's another bucket list. And if I get an, if I get another opportunity, um, which might be coming up, but if I get an opportunity, 
I would definitely jump at it just because I I enjoy being able to fly in in unique areas. But I don't know if I would want to do it full time like Mr. Steel or something like that because I just because it may not that might take the the, the fun. Okay, you know it may it may not be the package that you want. But if you wanted to do it with your exposure and the moves you're making to get more exposure, you probably could. You probably could. I could make a full-time job because I did it during COVID. I made a full living selling RC shit. A, a straight up regular. <laughs> I'm sure it's a great time too. And everybody had money in their pocket too. <laughs> it, was awesome. it was awesome. Between that mountain bikes, car shit. I mean, and cause I couldn't go to work. It was either figure out something that you had to hustle. Yeah. And at that point, you know, and I've lived the gig life. So I know bouncing from gig to gig in certain parts of my career. So I get it. You know, if the fountain dries up, you got to find another place to swim, buddy. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's the way it is, it's just living the gig life. Yeah. But it, yeah. So I know right now, if I wanted to do all of this side stuff I do, I can make a living doing it. No problem. But that's not my goal. You know, I, I need, a structured reason to wake up in the morning and a place to go to use my hands and my brain and make cool shit. I, I, I like the, I like a schedule to where I know every day I get to come home and I get to, I get to tinker with the hobby because yeah. I, I, I enjoy tinkering with the hobby or not. Instead of sitting in front of the TV, like I did for half my life. Now it's, Okay, I've got these six little projects working. Which one am I going to, you know, all these parts came in so I can pick back up on that one. I like coming in and I just I enjoy building and printing and all that stuff. And if you're on, if you're doing gigs and stuff, you're going to be away from that for, for a while. And if you do it regularly, like you said, then it becomes a chore and probably loses, you lose the passion. It's become, okay, this is, this is my job. And I gave up that I gave up my routine job. So now I have to commit to this because I need money. Right. And if you get high enough on the food chain, like steel, I'm quite sure he can pick his poison any day of the week. Uh, I feel like shooting movies. This, you know what I mean? Like if you get yeah. to that level and you enjoy that level, it's probably a great level. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I don't, I don't want that level of, of stress. That grind to get there is a grind. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I, 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 cool, you got to work for it. I get it. But like you, man, and, and I'm a, I'm a dad first. Me too. I'm a, I'm a dad slash husband first. And then everything else comes underneath that umbrella. And the way that I have FPV and racing RC structured, dude, it fits right in a groove, man. It's like a record. It's great. And I'm just so, afraid of mucking with it and trying yeah. to more than I can yeah. handle. People do good shit, you know? Um, it's not always easy to see, but I do believe if you've got sense and you've got drive, the money will come. And the most well-off people that I know, and I've got some people that are really well-off that I'm good friends with, dude, they just kept their passion. They always enjoyed it, and the money came. The money came. Yeah, they see that, and that's that's a blessing right there. If 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 you get if you can make money through your passion, right? You know, I mean, I don't think there's anything better than that. No, I don't think I don't see how you could settle for not. You know, I couldn't have a two hour commute because I give up too much life. Yeah. There's a lot of things. Now, if the FSD in my area was working properly in the Tesla, maybe, maybe if I could set up a little cast lab and a little <laughs> workstation, maybe. But FSD, what's that? A little self driving. Oh, okay. Car. It's getting close, dude. Like downtown Atlanta, it's, uh -huh. it's it's all the way there. All right, I cool. Get, I get in the city and say, hey, let's go to Rathbun Steakhouse on Crog Street, which is a super cool place. And I'm inside the perimeter. It'll get me there in traffic at whatever level I tell the car to get me there in. Safe, moderate, aggressive. And it will go and drive the car the way I tell it to drive. And I don't touch shit. <laughs> That's cool. Nutty, dude, is nutty. I'm telling you, it's crazy. It's, it's you know, it's, you know, you know what they think the future is. You know, I'm in after my auto parts, and what they think the future is going to be is nobody will own a car. Yeah, that's so what they're trying to head it to. Yeah, so you're going to have two, maybe three, 
conglomerates that own all the vehicles in the United States. And literally you, you get on your phone, you tell Alexa, whatever, Hey, I, I need a, I need a car here in 10 minutes. One of these little electric self-driving cars is going to pull up. You hop in, it takes you where, where you want it. To, you want it to take you. You pay whatever the fee is. It drops you off. It parks itself and waits for the, waits for the next call. And it's just all these all these cars just zipping around that nobody owns except for these conglomerates. Yeah, dude, I'm way down this rabbit hole, so we could talk about it all night if you want. I don't want to bore everybody, but it's a that it's it's much closer than what you think it is. You're in the automotive world, so you're probably getting a little snippet of it. I'm real nerdy down that hole, and it's it's. I don't. There's going to be benefits and negatives to it. I'm I'm gonna miss. It will be great for someone that could care less about driving that wants to get from point A to point B economically and do other shit while they're getting there. Yeah. Or watch, watch TV or you just want to watch TV. Yeah. I like pushing a clutch pedal. Yeah. So is it for everybody? Do we have the grid to support it? Blah, blah, blah. No, but that's the same reason everybody doesn't fly eight S FPV. Yeah. You'll hear hear some people out there raving about eight S. I don't get it because I'm still, a 4S fan on anything smaller than a 5 and only a 6S fan on 5 inch or bigger. I think the weight to, I mean, it's just, just math, dude. I mean, average battery at 3.75 volts times how many cells you got times KV. If you want your quad to run out at 55K, it doesn't matter how you get to the math, the mass of mass. If you're not over amping or the wires aren't getting hot or the motors aren't getting hot, they're spinning at the same rate when you're at max stick. I mean, it just, it just is. Yeah. So back to FPV stuff. That's why <laughs> I build what I fly myself. I like to, I like to hover just above center, just below center stick, about 10% below center stick. So whatever, whatever motor I pick up, that's what I try to tune my quad to fly there. So when I, Go from one quad to another quad to another quad. And especially as I'm learning, I want them to feel the same. Just like I do if I'm racing a Euro truck or a touring car or F1 on a track, I try to set my cars up where they feel similar. It's very hard to do in a car. But in a quad, it's like, it's, it's, to me, it's really simple. And, and I sell a lot. And I've yet to have anybody go, dude, this quad flies like shit. Like they're always like, dude, it's so smooth, so smooth. I'm like, you know why? Because most of the time it's on default settings. That's yeah. why. Yeah. What, what the, if I could tell anybody about all this tuning shit that I hear all the time, if you're Mr. Steel, preach people, maybe these tweaks get you to the promised land because you are so tuned in to what you're feeling. With the equipment we have these days, a default setting, Bardwell's presets, my preset that I have up there, which has minimal tweaks to default. Learn how to use your sticks, man. I mean, that's where your damn, that's where your pids are. That's where they should be in your muscle memory. Set your quads up to how you want them to be powerful, the power level, and then learn to use your fingers. You limited your throw on your last video. You, you showed that. Mm-hmm. That's because you don't like traveling too far with the way mm-hmm. you hold. You can pit 10 that bitch to the cows come home. And nothing's going to do what you did mechanically. Right. Nothing. Nothing. Same with almost any radio that's out that's got AGL1s. You can change the limits mechanically or you can do it in Expo. I don't like changing my models, so I don't do anything in my radio. I don't either. Digitally. I'll do it mechanically with screw settings. I like a really floppy throttle stick, but I like a tight pyro rate. And I like tight but close on cyclic on mm-hmm. my my right side because i've always pinched like since i ever flew and I, I don't know after my surgery i just went to thumbs and it was super comfortable i don't know what the click was well arthritis didn't help but <laughs> it happened where now i'm a lot more comfortable with thumbs but mechanically you can do what a lot of people complain about and actually make it work correctly yeah yeah it's no not I, I, living in digital world i i agree i agree i think I think most tuning is is still just a carryover. It's a it's a 
I don't know about it, so I want to I want to investigate it. I mean, if you remember back in the day, like I said, with separate ESCs and before a lot of this stuff got technical, it kind of was important. I mean, no matter what I was doing mechanically, if it wouldn't roll fast enough, I had to go muck with it. Mm-hmm. But now with a default tune, it's better than anything I could have mucked with back then. Right. And if I want to roll quicker. I just move quicker. If I want to slow roll, I just slowly move my finger. Mm-hmm. It's not, I think it, I don't know. I hear it a lot. And I think a lot of these, these younger guys get confused about what really does what. Yeah. And then they get it so far out of whack that, and and I guarantee you, probably five out of ten people that really have a hard time with it doesn't even know what the preset tabs in Beta Flight does. They don't even know. They can just pick like a default and hit go, and there it is. Yeah. I, mean, you don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't. I really don't even use the preset tab. Honestly, I mean, uh, other than like for like a whoop, like I'll use UAV. Uh, features, but, but as far as five inch or whatever, I pretty much stick with default unless unless I want a slight change to it or there's a slight issue, which usually there's a mechanical issue. You overlook something, you go you go figure out what what it was with your build. But generally, I don't really do a whole lot of tuning as far as my five inch. Um, I, it's all throttle mid and rates and stuff. Yeah, but I don't even mess with that part. You don't? No. So Every I, once in a while, I might tweak it a little bit if it's just not feeling right. But I'm pretty used to the the stacks I use or the electronics I use. And they normally, as long as my my power level is right in that butter zone I want to be at, like 40, 48,000 to say 54,000, like somewhere in that 6K you know, final RPM range, I'm spinning it. Just, it's, it's, the rates are there. The rates are there. Sometimes I have to muck with them. Like if, like on my Skyliner 3 versus like my um, Moon Goat, I got to tweak the Moon Goat a little bit because it just doesn't roll on axis the same no matter what I do. So mm-hmm. there's a little tweaking I want to do on that board. But in general, the defaults get me to the promised land just fine. And if I let anybody fly my quad, they think it's like the ultimate tune. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It's really crazy. I think there's a lot of placebo in tunes for a lot of people. Um, I don't know. I think, I think it's, I think it's so much simpler now. I mean, like looking at the news, news beta flight, like it's just like, what was it? I had a, I found an old a- AIO. I think I've had it for a couple of years. Right. You can't even put the new beta flight on it. And so I updated it to whatever it was, three something, because that's the, the highest it could go. And I, this is the change. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, I forgot. I forgot, you know, like I, to your point, I th- like with the new stuff, I mean, you just flash it and you could, you could be done. I still mess with my, my rates a little bit. And uh, my uh, throttle mid, but other than that, I pretty much don't mess with too much. And uh, and I have a little bit different between my freestyle. My rates are a little bit different between freestyle and and stuff that I, I, I I'm going to use potentially for work locally or whatever. I slow them down a little bit for like this. This side is is you know for lo- for work and stuff. And this is this is just I don't know. I have more radios and stuff, but. For work stuff, I slow it down a little bit because I, I wanted to try and do a little more cinematic. Somebody else would tell me, don't change the rates. Just just learn how to fly. Okay. Everybody's different. Nobody's wrong. Me, I just think it's 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 just I I'm gonna I'm gonna slow it down 50, 50 degrees or something for 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 it's that kind not, of stuff. It's not so alien to what I'm saying. You just have found a way in situations to make a match the way you want to match. Mm-hmm. If you were just doing like me, I'm doing the same ripping that I always do. And if I climb into a camera rig, I just slow myself down because I, I rarely do it. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I do it exactly what you're doing. I'd have a rig for a specific thing that I set up a specific way, but I, I don't really do cinematic stuff. So yeah, I kind of set up the same. But I mean, we could spend a whole 
episode, which we should probably in the future, just in beta flight for the stuff that people just don't know what it is. They have no clue. Like that CLI line, dude, crickets if you ask most people what the hell that even is. <laughs> you not, it's just everything that's graphically represented in a line format. That's it. It's all there. Yeah. Like you could do everything that you do in beta flight with ever cl- clicking a single button. Ever. Well, you, you know, it, it is, it's what's so nice is, is so much easier because now, you know, like just motor mapping, motor mapping now, it's just like, wow, y'all, you know, you used to, you had to get your, get your resource and unpin them and not, not forget which one was which. And, you know, flip uh, wires, all kinds of craziness. Yeah, I, for some reason I never I never flipped wires. I always did it in CLI. I guess I just didn't want to want to go back with the soldering iron, you know. I don't know. That was more comfortable for me back then. But yeah, different strokes for different folks, you know. Like it's come, it's come so far. Like you know, but for me, that's why. And I, I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of weird skull and bone society that can show me how this kiss shit is so simple. Maybe they're out there. Maybe they exist or how so buttery smooth it is. I've owned a lot of kiss shit, dude. And it ain't fucking simple. <laughs> it doesn't have half the features that I want in a GUI interface. It's way overpriced. And if they're, if it's apples to apples, then it, you actually got it to program correctly. I couldn't pass the Pepsi test and tell you if it was that or my T motor F7. Well, I will say Kiss has, I mean, to me, it feels like Kiss has more breaking, more D to it. Maybe. But it it it's it's not keep it simple. I mean, it's complicated to learn. It's 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 kind of like, you know, like the the guy we were just talking about trying to learn the ELRS for the first time, it can be a, it can be a challenge to learn. Um, and then like what turned me off is I was checking it out. Fet tech, we, we had, and I was the only one there's, there's like five of us and I even go back and I look ever so often to see if anything's changed. But for some reason, the MOSFETs on the Fet tech, uh, ESC, they would just unsolder themselves and fall off in mid-flight. <laughs> and I wasn't the only one that had this. You know, several of us are reporting. And now it was unique to DJI builds for some reason, but there was no difference between the way I built it, built that and built any other beta flight drone quad. But for some reason, the FETTEC MOSFETs was literally, and it was a beautiful, I mean, when it, when you went over and picked it up and you look at the pad for the MOSFET, there was no clumps of solder left. It was just, this damn thing just shot off and it was just a beautiful silver pad. And it might be two or three in a row that just shot off for whatever reason. And I, and I was like, I'm like, I'm done with it. I'm done. I'm I'm going back to beta flight, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm just, I, it's, it's, it was too much and then it wasn't reliable. And you know, I can, when I discovered, you know, a hobby wing stack, like, I'm like, I don't have to try out all these different stacks anymore. I found one that's actually 99% of the time reliable. Well, dude, in the car world, hobby wing rules the roost. I mean, they bar none have the best speed controllers, usually the best motors. If they make it, for land-based RC, it is the shit. I believe that. Durability, uh, frequency, precision, smoothness, you, you name it, they're at the top of the food chain. So I've got two two of my five inches have have uh, hobby wing stacks and they're they're expensive, but they're good. I've had I've had one die on me in like three years. Whereas in the beginning, but not oh, did you? where my flight stack for my damn Wires were coming from my flight controller to my <laughs> speed controller. So yeah, I, I cooked one, but that was my fault. It had nothing to do with this. It was me. It was awful. This is one that I had been flying for several months, and it just it just died all of a sudden. But not, it's it's never happened again. I'm not saying it's not going to, but it's never happened again. But like my first two years, 
I'm just so excited. Like I woke up and I'm just like, feed me FPV that every time, you know, I found that trap that every time a new stack came out, a new AIO came out, I had to, I had to, I had to get it and try it. And I was, you know, I'm sitting there buying from, you know, the common manufacturers and, you know, they would last a while and then they would die. And then I ended up just trying to hobby wing one day and I'm like, Oh God, I'm six months into the, into the, this stack and it hasn't died yet. All these other brands, I would have already gone through the ESC, you know? And so, you know, that just simplified my life so much. And then obviously, I mean, if you look at those who do a lot of city lifter work and stuff like that, I mean, there's a reason they're primarily using hobby wing. It's really, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've had one FC that was bad from the factory other than that. And I mean, I've probably, I don't know, 50 different builds, you know, and I had one FC that came bad from the factory and they replaced it. It was no big deal, you know? Well, you know, and I've, I've had good luck with that speedy B stuff too. And I hear people complain about it, but when you're the first person that comes out with a $50 workable stack and the whole market is saturated with a single stack and you've got, you know, 24 to one customers buying it, you're going to have more failures. Yeah. You know, and I think that had a lot to do with it, but I've got a couple of 20 by 20s that have been super reliable, but I will agree with you. Nothing holds a candle to the hobby wing shit in my opinion. Yeah. It's as durable and as well made as better than anything. Well, and you know, and, and some of that may be, you know, I know on a on a typical five inch, sixty amps, and now they're at sixty five. Um, is is there's overhead? I'm fine with that. I'd rather I'd rather ha- have that overhead and not stress it. That's just like when I build, I try to keep as many components off the FC as possible because I just want the FC to do its job, and that's the gyro. I don't want to add a bunch of LED lights and all this stuff to try and increase the draw on it i want it just to do what it's supposed to do and so like if i can have overhead on the esc i'm fine with that it's still it's still priced within within reasonable range to others you know no absolutely i mean if if i could get a good f7 hobby wing flight controller with just two uarts and a cable going to my esc i'm fine yeah 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 that's it yep I don't yeah. like adding a bunch of stuff to it. They no, could. Don't either. I'm, I'm, not, I'm the exact same way. No, no lights, no siren, no weird shit. If I want that, I'll pick up my Avada. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, what do you yeah. think about this this little Neo that they're fixing to come out with? You know, I saw it, and I'm trying to figure out. Like it's it's almost it's almost like this, you know? Yeah. A little bit bigger than this. So what what are they? What I'm trying to do with it. I mean, I don't, it's, it's like I, too big and too small at the same time. I don't know. Like, I know it's got some buttons on top that looks like those are quick shots. So I'm guessing, like, is this supposed to fill the niche for people that that they're just they're just out foot photography, make you know, taking pictures or whatever, and they just want to get some arrow shots, or is this because if I understand correctly, it's under 250, 49 grams. So is this supposed to do, you know, hit that FAA non-category or whatever, you know? I figure it's supposed to be, they're trying to hit a market of people who got comfortable with like mini pro threes and mini pro fours, but now want a little bit of manual control. Maybe so. Like somewhere in that middle ground. But they're constantly just trying to get to where we are. Yeah. You know, they're just using, in my opinion, they're just using a super high tech mechanism to try to get where we are and make it easy. Yeah. Make it easy. Just like older RC cars. And now everything just plugs up. You know, they never had to go through the, Oh, my receiver's not communicating. There goes my car across the street in the middle of Atlanta. Oh, that Marta bus just took out. <laughs> my you know, they, they didn't have to live through any of that. You know, yeah. It, now you plug it up. If shit ain't right, it just doesn't move. Yeah. Like you know, the early days of these things. F three. 
I've had shit just take off to the moon, dude. Luckily, I could figure out where it landed, but yeah, just where the fuck? Where I, remember, the shit? I remember the first time I had a fly away, it freaked it, freaked the shit. I'm like, what the? And like, yeah. luckily, it it landed in my neighbor's backyard. Oh, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> and what I did is I had I had I like that would suck. Yeah, I know what I and what it taught me a huge lesson. Like I I put the wrong motor pole count in, and when, as soon as I armed it, it went shoo. And I could I had control, but the only way I could control it because it was rocking is I could slowly descend it. But I had to, all I could do was give it give it left stick, and it would just keep di- diving. But as soon as I gave it any throttle, it would shoot up another forty foot. So I finally got it close enough in a in a in a in, in a general area of my backyard and disarmed. And thankfully, it was just a uh, it was just a little two inch. Um, oh, I can't think of what that. But he doesn't he doesn't make the frame anymore. It's uh, anyways. It was just a small little two inch Vista build, so it wouldn't cause any damage. But I was like, oh, that's what a flyaway is. Okay, I I, I need to step up my game of like being more careful. You know, absolutely. I had a five inch fly away in the early days and I that's to, scary i can imagine that's scary yeah. and that's one of the things that that makes me cringe sometimes and i i, I keep my mouth shut because i'm like i've made these mistakes too um i was just blessed that that it was on a smaller one or whatever but like i quickly learned not to fly over my neighbor's houses and stuff because you just randomly you just don't know when when something's randomly going go, gonna go wrong and the last thing i want to do is put a put a five inch quad through a windshield of a neighbor you know, so now it's just up and down the street and it's not, it's not fun, but I just do it to test. So I go up and down the streets like a T, but I don't fly over my neighbors. Plus there's, there's, there's kids, they've got daughters. I don't want everybody, you know, I don't want them to, think, oh, they're spying on my kid. So in order to be able to fly, I try to be respectful. It's like, it's perfect. Like it's, it's great. I mean, I, I really, yeah. probably like really have fun in my yard more more than i do but it's, it's perfect so and i got a couple of spots close by that are perfect you, you got you got a half acre or an acre lot or something because it looks like you got some room it's two acres actually oh is it two acres yeah, yeah. so you're good but i got that's plenty of dirt man yeah i'm in a subdivision so you know I'm, i got a neighbor that's 10 feet away on each side so um you know i quickly learned early on well i guess i never really did I never really wanted them to to get aggravated and tell me not to fly because I was so, having so much fun. So I usually just stuck to the streets. But even then, I learned to be a little bit more careful because like that one flyway, that was in my backyard. I stepped out the door, hit arm, and it just shot up. And I'm like, oh, I need to be extra cautious because if this had been a five inch in my front yard, I might have come down on somebody driving down my street or whatever. And so now... Now that I, I know a lot more, um, well, that, that's funny. It's a dichotomy. Now that I know a lot more and I'm much more safe, I fly less around my neighborhood and I, I go other places to fly, you know? Right. Um, but I, I, I do, yeah, I do get, neighbor shit, you know? yeah, I do get cringy when I see, see new people doing some things. I'm like, I know I did it too, but man, you really shouldn't. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to be that guy, but... You got to live through it. Yeah, yeah. In FBV Marketplace, I remember about this time last year talking to Tim and saying, dude, we're about to hit 30,000 people on here. We were at 28 and some change. He's like, I know I've been doing this for four years and we're just now getting there. That's awesome. But from this time last year to now, it went from 28 to 42 in the last 12 months. Uh-huh. So that's a hell of growth. Yeah. Four years to get there, that's an exponential growth path. And granted, I deny 50 people a day, but it's really a lot of interest in what's going on. And I don't know if it's a groundswell all around and the words get kicked around about turkey shit and this and that and imported parts. But I do think interest is bubbling because people are buying. Yeah. Stuff. I think the Vada 2 has picked a, piqued a lot of people's interest and brought a lot, a lot of new people in. I was thinking about grabbing one, actually. But I don't. is it that much better than the regular Vada? 
I, 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 man, it's 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 so much quieter too. <laughs> well, I don't hate. I dislike pushers in general. Uh-huh. I don't know why. It just seems like I don't know why exactly. Well, I think I think I think there's a lot of placebo to the pusher theory. It's I I just oh it's more control. I'm like I don't buy it. It's just it's just something that's you can do and and it's a selling point. But yeah. um, it's it's but, it's pretty good, dude. I liked it. it, and it it has more control. Uh, you know, it fights y'all washout more, which has its own weirdness to where when you have y'all washout, it kind of you're kind of fighting against each other to try and control it. But um, but it it seems like in the end, it it you, you recover, it, even though it's like. I, I kind of, kind of, I haven't done it yet, but I kind of think if you experience y'all washout, maybe you're supposed to just kind of stop and let it correct itself, right. you know. But I haven't done it yet because it's so anti-intuitive after all these years of flying. But uh, I mean, just the, just the safety features, just break it, you know. Tap on the side of the goggles, look down, look at your phone. Oh, I'll that's my wife. I'll text her back in a second. You know, tap your goggles, start flying again. I mean, it's just there's just there's just little coolness things to it. Right on. Yeah, like, it, it, you got the goggles three yet? No, dude. They're they're the most co- comfortable goggles I've ever owned. Even though I hate the integrated battery. How is the battery life in general so far? I haven't had an issue with it. I I was anti Integra because I'm like. I need to be able to swap batteries. You know, if I have a job, I had, I had a couple pairs of them, and they just—I don't know—they seemed even more weird fitting than my goggles too. Oh, really? So I haven't had the Integra, but the O3 with the labia things on your face—they are so comfortable. <laughs> Dude, that's why I like <laughs> for my damn goggles. I keep a fucking grocery I, bag. Batteries. Yeah, I've got like eight of those, man. Those are the best batteries, in my opinion. Uh, so before we get off, I do want to show you a couple of gadgets, Amazon gadgets. They're like next level because you're a build nerd. One is, have you seen the damn brushless turbo fans yet? No, let me. See. Well, you'll hear it, dude. It's literally like having my air compressor in here. Like, let's see. wow. Oh, wow. Like it'll, it'll fly my fucking atom. <laughs> like works really well. That's much better. That's much better than this. This is what I'm I'm using right now. That's so much better. <laughs> and this, this one, same thing. Uh huh. Not even in the same ballpark. Like, not even close to the same ballpark. It's it's amazing. And then. This right here, especially for the field or just in general, I carry it for my car stuff, but it's just as good. Twenty bucks. On I can't. Amazon. I can't see it. Twenty is bucks. It, is this soldering iron? Yeah, dude. USB Re- charge, recharge. Soldering iron. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah, and legit. Does it heat up fast? That's about 30 seconds. That's good for the field. Stay right there. That's totally fine for the field. 20 it's better, better than my TS-100 because I got to plug a wire look, in. and Yeah, because yeah, I carried my TS-100, or did, until I found this little jewel. All right. I'll have to check, get, get one of those. And even doing like product reviews for shit like this. And I think I saw... I could be wrong, but I think I saw one of yours about the um, the electric screwdriver. Yeah, yeah, they're killer. Yeah, I love mine. I, I still got one of the. I don't know. Mine's like four years old. I can't think of what it is. Well, boom boom, boom somebody, stick, yeah. bang stick, whatever it was. <laughs> bang stick. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Oh man. All right, brother. I'm gonna check out 